Welcome everybody, Kathy Arbor here, and today we're going to be doing some mixed media um, file folders and I'll also be showing you my 29 face challenge. I'm done. Yay! <laughs> hey Eileen, uh, they booted me off my own stream. <laughs> oh, and I still have that stupid thing on my chat. Oh! I don't get it. Hey, Nana. That is so frustrating. Uh, show. Okay, that's strange. Why are they? Yeah, so how's everybody doing? Is it still showing in my old um, post that it's alive? Eileen, can you go check for me so I can go and turn it off? <laughs> uh... Hi, Kathy. Have you heard from Dee Dee? Missed her this week. Uh, she's just taking a break. She, um, she just wanted to take a week off. She's fine. YouTube has been messed with the last two days. I think it's okay. Okay, thanks, Eileen. Um, yeah, so I don't know. This uh, fall, look at this beautifulness. This is from my yard, from my trees. And uh, they're really falling fast this year. This time last year, we didn't even have any color. Our leaves didn't fall till November. Late November, matter of fact. But this year, yeah, they're, and they're really, really, vibrant this year so i was thinking i would probably um get a bunch of them and i'm gonna photocopy some <laughs> or not photocopy scan them and then we can paint them learn how to paint them in uh, acrylics or watercolor even aren't they gorgeous they're so vibrant pinks and burgundies and purple i did try putting them through the big shot but they're the, it, they didn't give any color so i'm not going to do an eco dye i just i just don't care for the mess um and i like instant gratification <laughs> Hey everybody that's coming in. Good to see you all. Yeah, so lots and lots of colors. I love this one. It's kind of a peach. The veining in the, in the green. But you can also um, put these in wax paper and iron them. But they don't keep their color. So that's why I want to scan a bunch so I can, why not use them? Cut them out. Make fake leaves. <laughs> Look at this one. Isn't that gorgeous? The deep, deep reds. Is that, these are cool. Pink and green. Yeah, it is very messy, messy, and I'm not, I don't want to get messy. I don't, not, not my thing. So there's a big range of color from just plain blah to all these other gorgeous colors. I just love them. <laughs> People must think I'm nuts because when I'm taking the dogs out, I go around picking up all these leaves. <laughs> I just love the color. Yeah, so 
I'll uh, put a bunch of the scans up for you guys if you're interested in them. And you can play with them in however you want. Would you be interested in that? My leaf are 100 shades of green. <laughs> you did what yesterday? Did you go and scan a bunch? Okay, I'll scan a bunch and I'll, I'll put them in different arrangements. Like just not, you know, I'm not going to do this type of thing where we're all separated. I'll do a few of those, but I want to like throw a bunch in like this. Is that what you would like? And then I'll put them up on the membership page. And I'll probably see, there's all kinds of different ones too. We have, um, ah, let's see, there's all different types of burning bush is really pink. And then there's, um, Sumac, they're gorgeous colors. Yeah, I'm going to try that, um, Colleen, that ink technique. I do have inks, so yeah, I'd like to try that. That was such a neat idea. If, if you guys didn't see that, go on Kathy Bird's channel. Um, and she did the leaves and then inked them. And, and then put them through her big shot, and they turned out great. It was just, it was full eco-dyeing. Eco That's what it looked like. It looked like an actual dyed piece of paper, but without the mess and the time. Um, you could actually, what would be neat is um, put in a bunch of colors first, like, you know how there's those grays and kind of mauve grays in the eco-dyed eco stuff? You could actually do that with your paper in watercolor if you wanted to. And then put these through the, so it kind of gives it that um, eco-dyed look. Hey, Kat, Joan, Nana, Colleen, Eileen. Everybody, Nash, good to see you all. And we're having a beautiful, well, it's sunny right now. We did have a pretty good rain this morning, but we needed it. Um, so I was looking through my stash of papers and um, different things to make a cover for this. This is my... I finally finished it. I'm proud. The 29 face challenge. I did finish it. Um, what I did is I didn't do a like a finished piece of art type of thing, you know, with the color and everything and everything's just perfect. Mine is sketching. And what I did was I limited my time that I had to do it because I, you want to get back into gesture drawing. So when you go out in public, you can draw somebody quickly. I used to do it in art school. That was one of our main things we did every day. And I haven't done it for such a long time. I need to get back into it. Because it stops you from overthinking and taking chances. So you, some of them... Um, Near the end, I did more of those, and uh, some are just, just out of my imagination, and some are from photos from Pinterest. And a lot of them don't have hair, because what I'm thinking of doing, and I will share them, is making these um, in different sizes. And then I can add hair or hats or whatever. And because these, most of my drawings have some type of emotion. And I thought these would be really great for your daily journaling. So 
if you're drawing your day or journaling about your day, just the face could say it all and how you were thinking or how your day was going. So I'm going to make them in different sizes and then I'll, I will um, share them with the memberships also, if you're interested. And then you can, you know, paint them, draw them, color them, or just leave them as is, whatever you want. Kind of like a coloring book thing. So these are from my mind. This was the first um, pastel, oil pastel. And that was from the Sennelier. And I did find, I will show you it. I think I brought it in. Yeah. I did find a way of sealing them. This one hasn't been sealed, but I will show you the last um, stream I did. I sealed it and it worked. This was on black paper and it's the oil pastel also, but on black paper. That's really fun to do. So you, what you do is you draw your, um, your highlights and you leave the black for your shadows. She's kissing. Blowing a kiss. That's another um, Pam Pastel. Um, they do tend to dry a little bit, but you see, you still get a, quite a bit off your on your finger. So I put uh, deli wrap in between. <laughs> another make believe face. This one we did, and again, oil pastel, and that's one of my eco prints from uh, acrylic paint. Our creature we made out of, so we took a uh, eco print and found objects in it and we found a face and I found the wing and made the arm out of it and then kind of uh, highlighted and shadowed it. <laughs> that was fun. Hi Dorothy. I did one backwards because that's what happens. <laughs> I always do something backwards. These are just made up faces. Uh, these were from Pinterest. So I just did a quick. Uh, they were about 20 minute sketches. Just been out to see my niece for an hour just Oh, that's nice, Dorothy. Made up face, Pinterest face. And again, it's just scribble. So adjust your drawings. They're not exact, but you do have to find a way of finding the gesture of whatever that face is portraying. Uh, Pinterest, Pinterest. This was a really good one because of the cheeks and the mouth. And this one, I didn't want to put all the lines in, but I put some of the lines in for her aged look. And when you do them fast, you, after a while you get to learn what the most important aspects of the face to get that look is. It's very interesting. Uh, Pinterest again. a bit of a glare. Uh, made up Pinterest. Made up, made up. Made up, made up. See, I didn't even erase. I just kept going. So you can see all my lines and that I just um, reinforced the, the line I wanted. 
And that's what gesture drawing is, is you just keep going. You don't have to erase the lines. That one's made up. That one um, from Pinterest. From Pinterest. And that one's from Pinterest. And these ones are really um, sketchy. So he's sticking his tongue out. And then the baby. And then the last one from Pinterest. So that's the end of my 29 faces, but it was fun because I didn't make it a chore. I knew that doing faces can be, very, for me, I am really into detail and I knew that would take me hours and hours and I didn't want to do, I didn't have the time to do that. So that's why I decided to gestural an actual finished portrait type drawing. And it's fun. So I'm going to put a cover on this. I was going to put it in my file folder, but I think it's too thick. So I'm going to be um, putting it on, just put a chipboard on both. So I'm going to put another piece of paper here so I can actually glue this onto this side because I want to have it um, a little bit sturdy. And then I could write something in the side too. So I'm going to just glue this. Oh, it's almost done. Is it? Oh, that one's not any good anymore. Garbage. Well, so I will show you my folder for September and the um, the last thing we did last week, which was the Pam Pastel face, how I sealed it. And it worked. And I have to credit um, Lena for that. She told me about it because she tried it. So that was great. And we'll let that set for a bit. Okay. So this is September. And this was the back. Nothing. It's totally sealed. It's got a bit of a shine to it, but that I'm happy with. If I can seal these things, I'm happy. And here's what I did. Dorlin's wax, cold wax. So it's very, very buttery. So you just take a glove, make sure you wear a glove because there is some um, chemicals in, the, in this. Just put some on a glove, lightly smear it onto your paper and then you let it dry. I let mine dry for two days because, <coughs> excuse me, I had a couple, um, I had a couple days for it to dry because it was really thick pastel. So it took, it would take a little longer to adhere to that, but it worked. 
So there's there's nothing. Look. Nothing. So there you go. If you're worried about using pastels in your, your journals or wherever, like you could even use this on a, um, a canvas if you wanted to, and then you wouldn't have to worry about putting a glass over it. So that made me very happy. Yeah, I've seen actually, actually, uh, Lena, and if you're not familiar with Lena's channel, um, it's uh, Miss Linux uh, 2010 is her channel name. Um, fantastic artist. And she tried it also on watercolor and it was perfect. So give it a try. Test it. You, I like it. I think it worked out great. And that was the uh, um, I did this actually was from a class that I have on my membership. Um, if you're interested in the membership, you can go on the main channel page and it will show you if you look at the down below, um, it'll give you playlists and it'll say membership and you can actually look at all the different videos for the membership. And then um, you can also go on the link in the about um, tab. It'll give you a link that you could check out what it all entails. You've used it with oil paints. Yeah, I've heard about it uh, being used with oil paints also. But it had, but I. It left an oil spot. Is that what you're saying, Candy? On your paper? You just have to test these things. So um, for me, I like this, but test it yourself. Um, so far, I think it's great. Thanks, Eileen. Call me an old egg face again. Oh. <laughs> so, um, what I did for this month, um, I can't, I think what I'm going to do is put photocopies of the art that I did and then just put them in here. Uh, maybe make a little pocket here so I can just slide it in. Because I don't really want to cover this up. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and then I can uh, do. Uh, you saw last week. Well, that here's what I did. Um, this was just from the class. Um, I did another one, but it's hanging up right now. But it's bigger. So I had to find something smaller so I could just do this one. So I actually did it on one of these um, mailers that I got stuff in. So I just did it on the front of that. So use up cardboard. I actually put a little button star snowflake on the top. Yes, it's sort of bled out oil. Oh. So far, mine looks good. Um, we'll see. Hi, Gail. So this was a lot of fun. That was on our web, on my uh, membership, um, Blooming Artist tier, level three. So I'm gonna have to take some pictures of that. And then I also did the bird and put that in here. Um, while I was hunting for paper and cardboard, <laughs> I 
I went through my stash, like everybody has some stash. And boy, I must really had a, a hankering <laughs> to do books. Because <laughs> I got a bunch of these. Look at <laughs> Look at this one. This one and this one. <laughs> I got more. I got tons. Like I have those uh, little ones that you got at Michael's. I've got these ones. <laughs> like oh my god. So I, I'm going to keep them out so I know to use them. Because they're, I love them. I may not use this, the rings. I may um, do them in a Copic stitch of some sort, maybe. Or I don't know. But I love these. I think they're great. They're all different sizes. But yeah, this is cute. The home book. So it's different um, pages are different lengths and it spells home. These are cute. And this was, uh, I think it's a door. I don't even remember getting these. I got them at Winners <laughs> for five bucks. Yeah. So it's the door and then it opens up. So that's cute. What a great idea. You could copy this style if you like doors so isn't that cute so there's I have a ton so now I gotta think of some ideas I think I think um, <laughs> Something must have told me years ago to start stashing up for the time we're in. Because you don't want to go out searching for stuff. And it's getting harder and harder to find stuff because there's import problems. and So I'm set. This is cute. I, I could actually do this one this this month for Halloween. Sorry for all the noise. Isn't this cute? You can get little ghosties. And then this part is where you so you get what five? Yeah, five pay five of these. So I guess these guys go up here. Aren't they cute? It's got what three, so you could you could um, put fabric on here instead if you didn't want to have the rings. I don't care for rings myself, but I dropped one somewhere. Oh, there it is. But yeah, this would be fun. Maybe we'll do this one one uh, Thursday. 
we'll make make these up with some different textures and it makes the haunted house. Just a minute, I'll get this out. Want to scrap, it's called. Want to scrap. Not, I have to fix my... There's a cupcake. Grand labels, corset. Oh, I have a, where's that other one go? I have a dress one too. Yeah, there's the dress one. That's Bo Bunny. They're called. Oh, you found these ones? Yeah, they're fun. This what did I pay? Five ninety nine. So I have a ton. Um, I also I'm not sure where did I put that. I have two of these. I think one my sister gave me because she didn't want to do scrapbooking anymore. So she gave me all her stuff. So we both got this. This is actually a calendar from, <laughs> let's see, 2012, from 2008 to 2012, you could use it. Because I'd tell, show how old this one is. To get stickers, get the information. It's a calendar desk. You can put paper or pictures on it. it tells you the, all the. Uh, it's cute, but if you didn't want to do a calendar, these would make a cute booklet too. They gave you everything, the buttons, everything. So this thing actually sits up, see? And then you just, it's a, you just flip it. And then they all these have little, see, February, and it's got the little days on it. But they don't have the actual day, so you could use, still use these for February. See? And they just fit inside the, the little, they have a little pocket here that you can put them in. I thought this was such a cute idea. Why not? incorporate this into your journal that you're doing so here so these flip and then these flip so you can have notes on here whatever So each month is different. See? Isn't that a cute idea? Just pop Debbie. Hi, Deb. Cupcake. Um. Right, 
So I thought these would be very simple to make. We could make our own. Then they gave you the big sticker letters. So what a cool idea. So you could actually do a Copic stitch instead of having this, if you wanted to make one. And this stand is easy enough to make. Isn't that cute? So definitely be able to do something, something with these. Even though they're not in date anymore, at least they didn't put the day on the um, the month. They just put the date, not the day. So I'm going to play with those too. I got a lot. <laughs> a lot of stuff I want. I, I st just started going through all my craft boxes. And, and I also found these little houses. I don't know when these or who made them. Could be um, from that... Uh, wood place that is in Guelph. I think you have, don't you have some of these, Colleen? I think so. But these would be cute on a, a painting. Instead of painting the houses in, we could actually put these in, in the far distance. They would be cute. I like those. So, let's see. Oh, yeah, while I was outside look, picking up all of these, <laughs> I, my birch tree is really shedding. So, I picked a bunch of the birch paper. And now I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. It's fairly flexible. And there's different types. Like there's the, the really young, when it's young, it was red. And then it turns color as it gets older. And underneath that was this. And it's very much like tissue paper. So I want to do something with this it in a mixed media this stuff really feels cool so there it's uh look at that nice big piece i picked some of that i can't just let it go to waste mixed media ah, perfect and then I did find some of this, too. I forgot I had. It's actually got really cool paper in between. It's got a pattern to it. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, so it's just clear. So I'm glad I found that because I can use that. And these are the stencil I got from Stencil Girl. 
thought that was cool. Reminds me of grass. Or you could hang it upside down. And it looks like hanging willow. Yeah. Yeah, I want to do it on a canvas. I really like it. I was looking through my mixed media books too, and I've got a bunch of stuff that we're going to be doing next week for the techniques. This is the butterfly one. I love this one. And then this one. It's the window. I really like that one. So I'm thinking of maybe using this one on my October file folder this month. Um, my birch, my last have always was covered. Right side up to look right. Um, yeah, isn't the window pretty? Did you get this one, Colleen? The window one? I really like this one. Yeah, these are stencil girls. The last uh, ones that came out. I love windows. Right back to soul lines. See you, Debbie. Have a good day. All right. So I thought I'd show you that. Maybe we'll do that today. So <laughs> the 29 faces. I was thinking, what can I do as a cover page for 29 Faces? I have some of this paper. I thought this was pretty, this old paper. It's got a little bit of a shimmer to it. Could put that on and then just glue different things on it. Could put some of these on it. <laughs> And then I found this. There's some faces. <laughs> you could do this one too. 29 faces. Or just black and white. Or we could put paint it. And then put tissue on it also. First of all, I think I'm going to paint it with gesso. So I've already cut it to size. What else did I have to show you? Okay, so first of all, let's big brush. Just to get a nice coat so it doesn't um, soak all of the paint if we're going to paint on this at least it won't go keep soaking it up so it gives it a little bit more 
adhesion on the surface instead of disappearing. And it's also easier when you're painting on a gessoed surface for your paints to smoothly um, go across the surface. You don't want to drag, they call it, of uh, the paint because then it's too hard to, uh, if you're doing any shading or something that needs a, a smooth gradation, it's hard to do when it drags. And while we're letting this dry, maybe we'll see what we can do on a piece of paper. and make some um, colors for leaves. Put these up here. And get a piece of watercolor paper. Or actually, no, I'm gonna use a folder. Let's try that. Let's put some gesso on the folder as well. Or, actually, you could just, I kind of like the color of this. So we could put just a bit of matte medium on it, maybe. Try that. Cleaning my brush. Because we want to have the same ability to have the paint smoothly spread. The, this paper is fairly smooth, but it will still give some drag to your painting. So just go one way and then go the other. This way, I'm not going, I'm not pressing down hard. I'm just lightly going across the top. And this brush is a fairly uh, soft brush. It hasn't got really stiff bristles. And as it starts to dry, it just evens out any high ridges from the brush mark. You do this. And then we just let it dry. What is the difference between join and subscribe? Thanks. Uh, join is actually a membership where I teach classes of a specific um, subject. Uh, if you go into my channel, my main channel page, it will show you membership videos. And you can see all the videos we've done so far. And it's a paid um, subscription. And it also helps me as a creator. And there's three different levels. And if you press on the join, it'll take you to a video that I 
um, tell you about the three levels and you can also press on the levels and it'll um, each one will come up with what uh, is offered for that level. So I'm going to dry this so we're not sitting here watching it dry. <laughs> So you want it barely dry. It doesn't have to be like bone dry, but you don't want it too much um, soppiness. Once you do a bunch of layers, then it, it'll start to um, peel the paper. Okay, so what I've got in mind here is put a bunch of these colors. So we have peaches, we have uh, beautiful reds and sienna colors, greens, yellows. So we've got this yellow is going to go good. So I thought maybe we can do some, let's see, kind of watery. Could go into inks too. Um, and just let them blend into each other. Kind of um Kind of like a watercolor effect, a wet, a wet into wet, but with acrylic. So we need some nice bright colors. And I want to use some translucent colors because that gives it um, a really nice effect when they're on top of each other. You see the different colors shining through. So... I got some open. I have some open, or not open, uh, high flow and um,
Okay. So I got here some quinacridone red, transparent brown iron oxide, transparent red iron oxide. Here's light umber, transparent pyro red, alizarin crimson hue, napathol red light, henza yellow, and axacine purple. Those should do it. <laughs> so we'll just make a mishmash and then um, we'll try something a little different than what um, Kathy Berg did. I, my big shot isn't wide enough to put this through. So I'm going to have to maybe get my pastry roller. <laughs> It's a nice marble one, so it'd be nice and heavy. <laughs> so we'll see. You do what you have to do. So we can make some neat colors, combinations. So that's a definite one. Look at that. It matches. And that one is Naphthol Red Light. Hey, Julie, Nash. I'm just, I, I haven't used these in a while, so I have to uh, really take them. Lizard Crimson, that'll be a good one, too. I'm going to spray my paper with water. Now you could also put salt if you want a speckled effect or alcohol. Okay. I got some water here. And I think I need some yellow. Maybe some transparent red, red iron oxide. And some, I need green. I don't know. Well, I, can, I can put a little bit of green in. I must have green. Maybe, although it's more of a apple green. Make some sap green up. Just water it down. Okay, that one shook. And maybe we'll see. Red iron oxide or pyro red oxide. And I like using artist grade when you want. Oh, this one's no good. Nope. Red when you're using um, transparent color. Do some green gold. <laughs> and a brush. Oh, 
Not fairly watery. That's ready. Now, if you just put splots in and you take your and just drip. Now, if you had ink, colored ink will do this really nicely and it just bleeds wherever the water is. A little harder for this stuff. let it round and let's see just a bit of this A little thicker. Some all off. I'm going to try this one, shake it a bit more. Nope, stuck. Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. A little bit of that. You can always add more. I'm just splatting. around a bit. Here's my brush.
Mm -hmm. I think I need more brown. Or maybe not. Let's see. Where of And you're not like maybe. Is this? I don't think this one's even open yet. Nope. I'm going to try something, see what happens if I lay these down. And put a plastic on top, Let that plastic paper bowl. I just had... Just put that on there for a bit. Well, that's you could put um, wrap too, like cling wrap would be cool. Just taking letting some of that water run off. in a bit and a bit, but it was only on bits and pieces of it. Let's see. Um, look.
Yeah, I'm going to scan some for you, Dot. Put it on the um, members page for all three levels. That's cool. Um, you could do it on the jelly print press too. Um, that's how I did that one face with the background. So you could use these on your deli jelly prints. Okay, let's close these for now. And then I suppose we could try Now my um, embosser is at the bar right now. <laughs> so I'll have to run over there and do this. But let's try. Embossing these. Can't remember. Did did she wet the paper or anything? Don't remember. Oh, that's a big leaf. Cool. Had more ink on it, but <laughs> that's the real side. Flattens it nice. You could actually keep these after you flatten them. They aren't any good to put through again because they're flat, but you could um, put them in wax paper and um, iron them if that's 
to your liking. That's cool. Um, <laughs> Let's see what this one does. We could actually put green on this one. Let's see. The smaller one. And put it in the same picture. Oh, cool. That's neat. So it makes it look more like a colored leaf if you add more than one color to it. Let's see what happens. We wet it and let it bleed. do a whole lot now that I got my contaminated uh... What are the colors we got? Let me see. This is cool. Orange, maybe? Purple? Um, Okay, let's see what we can do. So if I take this one, See if I take it. Okay. 
I sprayed it a bit. It happened. Cool. <laughs> That's cool. I wet it just a bit. I don't know. It just makes it smear a little bit more. But you can still see the lines through it. Let's see. Trying to find ones that have fairly deep lines. Maybe some yellow. Okay, I'm not going to put any water on this one and we'll see what the difference is. That's the difference. So it's a little more, it's not as, as watercolory look to it. I don't know how um, Kathy got her veining without getting the, the rest of it colored. Yeah, I'm using my big shot.
guess she just, I don't know. Try it doing the paper instead. Okay, so that's with just the water on the paper. But you can still see the lines of the This is just a photocopy paper. Let's try a piece of watercolor and see what that does. So I'm just going to use watercolor on the bottom and okay. get a leaf here and let's put some yellow on. Oh, oops, if you take the thing off. <laughs> bit of green center and some red just a smidge where to put the areas okay so I'm gonna wet the water the watercolor paper Put it down and then put a piece of paper on top. Rice paper, too. She used rice paper. She wet her paper first. She used rice paper. I don't know if I have rice paper.
So that's what it does on watercolor paper. So it makes it a little more watercolory. <laughs> So it squished out the water onto the paper of the leaf. Let's put a one down here, maybe. Let's do a nice dark one. And maybe some let's try that. Enough ink on, but it showed a bit of it. Or it didn't go through that. But it's pretty. So you could actually make these look more like eco prints by letting it um, bleed out. So you'd have to get, um, yeah, the distress inks or not the Adirondack because they're permanent, but the other ones, yeah, so that they bleed out a little bit more. But it's cool. I like it. It does remind me of um, eco dyeing, that's for sure. These are really neat. So the, this is on just plain copy paper. So this, even this, is more like an eco dye, where you get just partial prints than that. Same with this one. So you could actually just throw some mm, watercolor on that. Just because <laughs> the Eco Prints has, you know, they've got grays and different shades like that. You just kind of mess up your papers. <laughs> Throw some stuff on it. Some grays maybe would be good or a bit of yellow. Let's see what gray would be.
color box. I'm not sure if, what kind of ink they are, but but it does. Spread or not? No, that must be a permanent. But you could see just rough them up, dirty them up. Um, different. If you want them to bleed out more, use your distress inks because they have the uh, movable ink. Or you could get, well, put charcoal on it even. Graphite. Somewhere I have graphite powder, but I don't know where it is right now. Good, use graphite powder. But yeah, that's kind of cool. So I would use softer inks, grays, if you want the eco look. So grays, muted down, um, yellows, a little bit of green maybe, if you want the real look of an eco print. But I like these too. I like more color. But they're cool. Those dry. Neat idea. A whole lot easier than boiling down your papers. <laughs> it is to me anyways. I just can't be bothered doing that. And then you have to wait. And I don't like waiting. <laughs> Cass, have you tried it on rice paper? I don't think I have rice paper. I know, it's a shock. Um... I like the gray. Yeah, the gray is nice. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember what I was going to do on this. Hmm. Yeah, I know, Eileen. Shame on you. <laughs> it is what it is. What do you think? We could do a um, mishmash of colors and then
do a transfer on it. Something cool. Ooh, it's gooey. What? We wanted it so bad. We bought a huge roll. <laughs> well, you had a plan to use it. I have no plan on that type of thing. I've never used rice paper. Just play in it. Let it drip. These are flat. Maybe these would work better if they're flat. Okay, let's see what that other one looks like. Move this first. Try. Meat gun to it for a bit.
Now, if you were doing this um, on your own, I would have left it to dry completely on its own and you would get a whole lot more detail from the leaf. So if you're going to do this yourself, try that. It might take the whole day to dry, but it really looks cool. You can also do this with ink. Yeah, magicals would work too. But, you know, considering the amount of water and stuff I put on this folder, this folder held up pretty darn good. I would want to it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So now we can, um, it's almost it's fairly dry. It's not dry, dry, but it's fairly dry. So now what we can do is we can put these leaves back on. And if you have some sprays, put them in different, in different sections too. Now you could take sprays or um, if you have spray paint, that would be awesome too. Um, let me think. I do have spray paint, but I don't want to spray it in here. Um, I wonder if Lindy's would stick to this. Let's try it. Let's see. <sighs> so we have Moon Shadow Mist, and this one is called Crow's Nest Copper. And I also have Starburst in Red Hot Poker Orange. Hopefully these work. We need something darker. Maybe a green. Let's try a green. Uh -oh. Okay, no point in wasting this goodness. Throw it on there. Let's dry that.
gives it a little bit of shine. So now I think we need to get into, let's see, a little bit of green. Um, so I like that area. Now, of course, this one's stuck. This one works. Right, see, takes a print of the Lindsay's, so you can put that on the papers too. It just gives it a little bit of color. Then, wonder, let's try. Mopping it up with the leaf. No, I don't have Seth sprays. <laughs> I don't, I'm not like you guys. I don't have every single spray going. Oh, look at that. See? Look at that. That's even better. Lindy's. Spray your leaves and then press on them. A little bit of gold to it. Very pretty. I don't know if you can see that. It's got a bit of gold fleck through it. 
pretty. Can you get double your joy? <laughs> Patting it off of uh, onto other papers. Okay, now we could just leave it like this and then emphasize around certain leaves. Or we could do the block it out part. What do I want to do? Thanks, guys. So, we'd have to take some probably paint. I'm just thinking here what I want to do. I like this. This is nice. How about if I dark color, maybe green. Let's do a flat one. One that we squished. Let's see what happens. I'm going to try drying it with the leaf on. didn't really do too much. Look at the veins took the, I don't know if you can see it, took the uh, iridizing of, of the paint. The, the veins of this leaf are iridized. That's so cool. Yeah. 
Maybe I should just put that down there. Glue it on. What do you think? The smushed ones. Hmm. I could cut one out too. Put it on there. Or when I um, photocopy them, I could cut them out and put them on here. That's an idea. And then I don't have to worry about it decaying. That could work. Yeah, so look at all the, it's not, it's even more colorful than what it's showing. You're showing a lot of white. There's no white there. It's yellows and golds. Very pretty. Let's see. I like how this has shown. What can we do? Um, kind of a brown transparent iron oxide, maybe. Let's try some of that paint. Or, where are you? I got a sponge. Where's that? This was the long one. Maybe this one? This one could be. Nope. Let's try. I'm going to try a small one first. This one. I'm dipping my sponge in the iron oxide. Then take a brush. Actually, a baby wipe would be better. Where's my baby wipe? I'll just use this. So I don't want a hard edge. So you want to let it... There, see? You're showing a little bit.
I think you have to go into a little bit of a darker color to show this up. Maybe in here. More. This is the alizarin. No, it wasn't. It was dioxin purple. I'm using because it's a high flow. It's it's very translucent. So you're not. A little bit of purple. See, there you're just outlining some of them. Okay, that's good. Now, let's dry that. would be really cool is to um, cut out with your big shot you could cut out leaves smaller leaves from the leaf itself <laughs> that would be neat okay let's see what this one's doing uh, yeah it's working This one's stuck. Oh, but it's cool. <laughs> Took some of the paper off, though. It. You still can see some of the leaf. See, you would probably have to... 
if you let it dry completely, you probably wouldn't be able to get the leaf off. It would be stuck to your page. You'd have to put something on your leaf probably so it wouldn't stick. So if you, if you actually, that's what you iron them first and then you could lay them down and get a print from them. That's cool. I like that. Because the high flow has a lot of um, glazing fluid or um, uh, what do you call it? Um, the stuff they use for airbrush, airbrush medium. And it can, it can be very sticky. So that's why it's going to stick to those leaves. But I don't know if you can see that. Where the leaf was, it's not shiny. You have a, um, a matte looking surface. There, see? So that's kind of cool. You can see it on here, this one here. Get it the right way. You can see the how matte it is. The other is very shiny around it. It's neat. So you let this dry completely, and then you can go over top of it and out either outline part of the of the leaves or negative paint around the leaves, so you have a more definite outline. Is that one of the water color? No, this is actually chipboard that was painted with gesso. Um, there's the watercolor. See what a leaf would do with that. See. Let's just spray this one. That's some red uh, green. Throw it on. Yeah, it's got a lot of medium in it. That's why it's sticky. They're great to work with for, you know, glazing. Um, that's what I use them mostly for is for glazing over um, certain areas. Or for drips. They're great for drips. Water. Reminds you of a parrot tulip. It takes the shape of the watercolor a little more. Better than the paper. So if you want to try and use your now that's just the Lindy spray. So if you want to use, try the Lindy spray and uh, spray the backs of them, that works pretty good. Keeps the line more crisp. Okay. 
you could probably do this too with watercolor. Paint your, the backs of your leaves with watercolor, spray it, and then put it down on your paper. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. Now, where did I put that stencil? What this would look cool if you use a stencil. I'm going to do it, guys. I'm going to use the stencil. All right. Now. <laughs> Whatever. I know you don't like watercolor. It's going to take out a little bit from those panes so it looks like a shine. All right, and then I might do these brown, maybe. This is green black I'm using.
All right, you want the big reveal? Let's turn it sideways so you can see. You go. Now we can finish this off with putting other things in it too. So I could put brickwork in here if I wanted to or add more um, defined um, colors. It's so like these are look like leaves up front. So that's what I'm guessing they are. That's cool. But you use the stencil backwards. You should show it at first the other way. Oh, you mean the window should be over here? Yeah, doesn't matter. Whatever side you like. That's the thing about stencils. <laughs> you can put them in a, whatever way you want, really. Use them backwards or frontwards. So yeah, I'll let this dry and then I can go back in with marker or paint and put highlights on certain areas to make it look like the sun is really popping it out. Or a mid-tone even. Um, like in here, you could use that other stencil that had the, or you could have used parts of this stencil too. Like this part here, just this area. I could put this back on and um, do highlights of, of uh, the sun shining on the leaves type of thing. Yes, but this is pretty. I like it. That looks cool. So that I think, you know, you could put more greens or something in here as the bushes. Maybe darken the bottom a little bit more with um, darker shades of orange and green. That's just, you know, one stencil and it kind of made it. I love it. So, and you don't have to use the stencil, the whole thing. If you wanted just this section and not the window, you could still do that. Just don't put the window in, that's all. Tape it off or whatever. If you want it really mixed up, you could also... Um, turn it the other way around and put another color in. Yeah. 
All right, so what time is it? Yeah, uh, I was wondering why the dogs were crying upstairs because they know it's time. <laughs> How dare I go past that? <laughs> All right, so this is still wet too. I can't do anything till it's dry. But I will post, um, I will get a bunch more leaves because I have a ton. <laughs> and I will scan them and I'll put them in the membership on uh, the community um, comments. So you, you just go to the community tabs and it'll be up there for you to download and use for whatever you want. Thanks, guys. So you guys have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you around, I'm sure, somewhere. There's a lot of us streaming now. And take the time and get creative. Try things. It doesn't have to work out, but that's how you start experimenting and finding out new ways of doing things. So get out there and do it because next week we are going to start our technique Thursdays and um, I will be starting off with acrylics and we'll be doing it on um, probably a six by six by 12 um, sheet because I want to make this into a booklet and then you guys can uh, all do a separate class for that for putting the book together. I have a neat way of doing that too. <laughs> and I do have a well. I'm not going to use those books, but I'm going to make my own booklet. I have this idea, and we'll actually be using a little bit of fabric with it. So you guys go, go have a great day and. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.